So with what we saw before with the function machines that I made and switching things around, we found out that if you switch X and Y, it undoes what was done before. We're going to find out that we can do that not only algebraically, but we can do that graphically as well. So with an inverse, so when it says to sketch the inverse of the graph, all we have to do is switch the x and y coordinates. So if, for example, this point on our graph is negative 4 comma 4, if we switch the x and y around, we would have the point 4 comma negative 4. If we do that with all of our points, so this one is negative 1, negative 1, what do you notice about that point when you switch things around? It stays, exactly. stays exactly the same. One comma three will become three comma one, and three comma two will become two comma three. Now we have a bunch of points there and you have to join them together. So how do you do that? Well, they're joined together the same way that they were joined together from the red ones. So this point here, negative 4 comma 4, that started here and it connected to this one. This one connected to this one. This one connected to that one. Is that inverse a function? Do you remember how to tell if something's a function or not? You're saying no? Every single y value must only match one x value. Okay. And do you remember a shortcut to figure that out? The vertical line test. So the vertical line test says if I draw any straight vertical line, so that looks pretty straight, and I take that line and I move it along my graph. Notice on the red graph, we're going to do the vertical line test to the red graph. Notice that as I go through the red graph, that vertical line only hits one point as I go along. It never hits more than one point on the red graph. But on the blue graph, there's multiple places. Here it's hitting two points. There's even places right here, it hits three points. If you can find one single place on a graph where it hits two points, it's no longer a function. That's your vertical line test. So the vertical line test so for part B, we're going to use the vertical line test. Since, that doesn't look like since. Since it hits more than one point, it is not. A function. Once you have that equation, the algebraic way that it would do that is if you would plug in something and get two answers as a result. Okay? So, an example of something that's not a function from what we did before. I can't remember if we had this exactly, but if you have that plus or minus x plus 3, if you plug in 1, what do you get? 1 plus 3 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, you get plus or minus 2, you get two answers. And because you get two answers, it's not a function. The way that a function likes to work is it likes to do something, it's like a machine. Those function machines, every time you plugged in a number, it popped out one number. Right? That makes it predictable. That's why we say that something functions well when it does the same thing that we want it to every single time. Right? If you have a machine that is supposed to make pots and you put in a piece of metal and it goes boom and out comes a pot, it's functioning. Right? But if you put in a piece of metal once, out comes a pot, 
Next time out comes like a, a puppy dog and you're like, what is happening here? Then it's not functioning well. It's not doing the same thing every time. So what we have here with our vertical line test, since it's producing more than one answer, it's not a function. And you just have to find one place where it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Okay? So, for example, talking about half mark mistakes, let's say you're drawing a parabola on your final exam. And you're not paying attention too much with your parabola and you, it looks something like this. That looks close. You say to your teacher, you knew I meant to draw a parabola. But do you see how that right hand arm is like bending backwards a little bit? You're a little bit careless. Then it wouldn't pass the vertical line test and they will take off a half a mark for that mistake. Because it's not, a, you wanted to draw a function and you didn't draw a function. Yes? a good question. I think that's a 0.5 every time one. Then part C, state the domain and range of the function and its inverse. So we'll do the function in red, domain and range. We'll do our function that we did, that we drew in blue. So I'm going to use interval notation here. Do we have a smallest x value on the red graph? Yes, negative 4, our biggest x value, positive 2. So if our smallest value is negative 4 and that's included and our biggest value is 2, 3, look at this, nice recovery. We go from 4, negative 4 to 3. And if the smallest y value is negative 1, and our largest y value is positive 4, our range goes from negative 1 to 4. If we do the same thing with our domain and range of our blue graph, notice what we get. Our domain is negative 1 to 4, and our range is negative 4 to 3. I should probably even, should I, should I write my 3 like this so you really see what I did? What do we notice? They flip, right? And so this idea, the switch, the x, and the y, is the big idea for the inverse. It's what we do algebraically. It's what we do graphically. It happens to the domain and range. So the domain, which are your x values, becomes your range of your inverse. And your range of your original function becomes the domain of your inverse. All right, questions to do for this one. And we will do example two before we do questions. So our four and nine. 